Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Let's Get Together, a social club for seniors and this dementia-friendly Fort Worth program. It is being recorded uh, for future viewing on our YouTube and other media channels, and it is brought to us uh, in part through funding from Arrow Cares by Lockheed Martin employees and also from Hesta Stewart Christian Trust. And I'm Heather, your host for today's program. There we go. And we're doing Where in the World is Heather today? So I'm going to skip from this slideshow to the next one and see if we can um, stump you. Wow. Uh -huh. I, my money is on you and not me because <laughs> you get it every time, but yeah, I don't know. We'll I'm going to try. I'm going to try. I'm not going to look at my phone today. Okay. okay. I will not look at my phone. Okay. Let's see. So where in the world is Heather? Any, any clues or guesses so far? Uh, no. I haven't dropped any clues that I'm aware it's, of. It's in the world. It's <laughs> Yes. All right, so first clue, somewhere in the United States. Is that not an amazing picture? Oh, it is. That's wonderful. I that with the, with, with the, the moon, moon the, is so full yeah. and in contrast to that deep blue sky, yes. like it's it's a beautiful picture. Yeah. But um, so I'm somewhere in the United States and I'm in a location that has um, the name of where I am is found in multiple states in the United States. So I'm in a town that covers 8.6 square miles, so it's relatively small. And I'm in a town that's received multiple top best awards. Like for example, a number of magazines have named this town the best small town, the best small town for shopping, the most arts, vibrant, vibrant art, small community, and the prettiest town in the state. And um, it was um, it was uh, named the best small town in the state by Architectural Digest. So that means that there's a lot of um, historic architecture here. If that's a big clue. So. Continuing on, a few more clues. I'm in a state that has a variety of uh, landscape to enjoy. Hills, valleys, colorful wildflowers in the spring every year. Guesses on the state that I'm that I'm in. You're, te you're Texas. Uh, of course, you can't see that bottom picture and not not. No, I know. Texas. Yeah. Where, did I ask you before about um, having your picture taken in the blue bonnets? Was it you no, that we, I was talking to about we, that? We talked about blue bonnets one time, but I wasn't in the blue bonnets, you know. There, we talked about. I I think it's bonnets. so. I love I love people watching, and I think it's so fun sometimes just to drive down the road and you see whole families and their Sunday best and they're you know sitting in the blue bonnets and then of course somebody's going to go rolling. Some little kid's going to go rolling mm -hmm. in the blue bonnets mm -hmm. in their dress and have green, you know, and blue marks all over their, yep, their pretty yep. little dress. And mom's going to get upset. The curls are coming out and a blue bonnet stuck in her hair. And don't pick that. It's illegal. No, it's not. Yes, it is. I can just, I can picture the conversations going on on the side of the road. Yep. Do you ever do that with your kids or grandkids? Oh, I'm sure we did somewhere along the way. You Is know. that something your, your wife would, your wife would put together? Well, what? What put together what? I'm sorry. Getting the family together and having pictures in the wildflowers. No, we had a lot of our pictures were just just natural life. Okay. You know, places we're been. There was no stage, nothing. Mm -hmm. It was just life. You know. There you go. So. So I learned this that um, that there are different. Texas is broken up into different towns, different regions. I've always heard yep. like, I've always heard the Panhandle Plains. I've heard, you know, the Gulf Coast area, the Hill Country. But I, I had, until I started doing some research, I had never seen a map like this that divides it into clearly defined regions. Have you seen a map like this? I have not. I've, I've know these regions, but I've not seen a map like it. 
It's um, and I've never traveled to the Panhandle. Have you? Yes. I what have. is what's the landscape like there? Very Spartan. Okay. It's almost like, like West Texas, right? Or is yeah, it any different? Except except it's not as dry. Okay. okay. Um, if you drive out of Amarillo, headed west, going into Colorado, it's like you you better have gone to the bathroom or stop before you <laughs> went out of Amarillo because there is nothing until you get to Colorado. You have Absolutely no options. nothing. You know, um, there's nothing. So that's funny. Yep. So Piney Woods region, that part makes sense. Prairies and lakes, that part makes sense. And Gulf Coast and the hill country. Have you been to Big Bend? I have not. Well, I haven't either. I don't know what's in Big Bend. That's I'm sure. I know that I feel like I'm, oh, I feel like I'm not like a good Texan because I've never traveled El Paso to Big Bend. Is? Is I El don't Paso know. And Big Bend? Because I've been to El Paso. Well, let's see. Let's see what Google has to say about it. it from the map, it kind of looks like it would be because El uh -huh. Paso borders Mexico and the Panhandle doesn't border Mexico. So it has to be, it has to be the very left-hand side of Big Bend. I don't know. It is in the Big Bend area. Big, yeah. big Bend region, destination El Paso yeah. is one of them. Yeah. One of the big stopping points. And it's the very Western end of Texas. Mm-hmm. Okay, so it's I like- I don't know that I've ever traveled that far. I know it's dry and desolate. Oh yes, it's it's a one of those, again, if you see a sign that says last stop for gas, last you better stop. Gas, you better stop, yeah. Mm -hmm. You don't have enough gas, you better stop, yeah. <laughs> uh, there's, there's really nothing out there. Um, you know, you keep saying, keep seeing these ads, you know, of land for sale and West Texas type of thing. Well, I know the area and there's nothing there. Why would mm -hmm. you buy it? You know, uh, you can buy dirt, you, but that's all you'll have. Uh, yeah. Other than you own a piece of land because yeah. there's nothing you can do with it. Yeah. But anyway, D isn't, um, doesn't, uh, where did Paul, where does Paula talk about where she's from? Uh, Lubbock. Lubbock. Is that, is that in that area? Is that that far west? No, no. Lubbock is, I think it would be in the panhandle. Area. Is it further north? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's not real north, but it is. Okay. The southern part of the panhandle. Okay. Maybe top side of the hill country. Okay. Yeah. Well, so, a little bit higher up. It'd be like Dallas. You go to Dallas and then you go a little bit north of up there. Okay. In the panhandle, but not real tall. But not, not deep far. into the panhandle. No. Okay. So I'm so I'm not in well, where in the world is Heather? I'm not in a big town and I'm not on the coast. I'm not in the panhandle either. And I'm not in the piney woods area. So it would be somewhere around the central region of Texas. Okay. And I'm also in a place that is known for uh, having enchanted rock. Is that familiar? Enchanted rock. I think it's known mm -hmm. to um, tourists and locals, but if you haven't traveled to visit this place, no, you don't, may not. I don't think I have, but anyway, okay. So Enchanted Rock, a lot of times locals will just come and they'll hike up it, but you can see just for miles and miles. And um, anyway, it's a, I think it's a historical marker. And so a lot of times it brings in, you know, foot traffic and um, it just says uh, that Enchanted Rock has fascinated humans for thousands of years, and as a result, it's inspired many stories that endure today. Most of these are rooted in fantasy rather than fact. And the Tonkawa Indians thought that ghost fires flickered on top of this dome because it isn't, I don't know what the elevation is, but it isn't like this huge peak. It's just a, it's a larger hilltop, basically. Um, and the odd creaking and groans coming from the dome frightened them. But don't worry, geologists said the dome, the, the large rock, it creaks and groans as temperatures change. And as for the ghost fires, the rock glitters in clear nights after rain, and scientists think the glittering is a reflection of the collected rocks um, on, the, uh, on the hilltop. And one story tells of um, an Indian maiden 
who saw her tribe killed by an enemy and she threw herself off the top of Enchanted Rock and her spirit haunts the rock still. It has all these different, you know, mm -hmm. stories that go along with it. And then um, once the uh, Tunkawa captured a Spanish conquistador in this area and he escaped by um, going up to Enchanted Rock. And this gave rise to this Indian legend of a pale man swallowed up by a rock and was reborn as one of their own. Um, so I, I had never heard these stories um, and I've traveled to this area quite a lot. And, um, but I usually go as a tourist and not visiting the people who, who live there. So it wasn't until I started doing research that I heard some of these stories. But the historical marker, um, really it's just talking about how um, how long ago this area was, um, uh, you know, civilized, and then it has maps of the area because there are trails and walking trails all around this enchanted rock. That, it's kind of cool hearing all the stories yeah. over the over the years. Okay. So this area that I'm in, it is part of the Texas Hill Country, and the Blue Bonnet Trail runs through uh, this town that I'm into. Oh. I see your wheels turning. Yeah, but it's not turning in the right direction. So anyway, okay. go ahead. <laughs> um, so um, it's this area is home of some of the most amazing, beautiful, colorful wildflowers in the world. And of course, you know, you have to throw in the, the blue bonnets. It's whether you want to see a field of blue bonnets or Indian blankets, paintbrushes. What is this? Cor Coriopsis? I don't know. Um, I don't know. I had never heard of that one before. Um, Mexican hats or lavender blooming along the hillsides and the roadsides. This Texas hill country has a plethora of different arrangements. And now that I'm reading this about lavender growing wild, I was at um, Costco yesterday and they had these huge blooms of lavender plants. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until I saw those huge blooms that I realized that I had seen it growing, growing wild. Do you guys have lavender, any other like fragrant plants in your, in your yard? Does your wife grow anything no, that's beautiful no, and colorful don't. in the springtime? No, not really. Really? Oh, I don't, oh. anything that's green at my house is fake because I can't keep anything alive, but I can sure enjoy hey, it. We got dandelions. <laughs> <laughs> the weeds, yes. you know, so and, anyway. they, and they multiply like like yeah. weeds they multiply yeah. like weeds yeah Ooh. so i'm going to keep on going a couple of uh just fun facts about central texas um cold winters coldish winters i guess it depends on where you grew up um definitely warm summers and, but the central area of Texas has some of the hottest summer temperatures in the state, which I, when I heard this, this was on a state website. Um, and whenever I heard that, I started thinking, I don't know if that sounds right, but maybe it's because the Gulf Coast area feels a different kind of hot because of the humidity. I think it does. Yeah, it's a dry heat. Yeah. Yeah, comparatively. Um, I feel like the, uh, um, having some humidity in the air makes it feel warmer. Mm -hmm. Is that, is, am I thinking about well, that the right way? Yeah. We lived in, down in the Houston area for a while and it really got hot in summer, you know, um, uh, but it was the humidity. Mm -hmm. And once you get out of that, it's hot, but it doesn't feel as hot. Uh -huh, it's not as overpowering. No. We, um, in the, in the winter time, we have, um, humidifiers that we'll put out around the house and it just feels like it keeps the house warmer. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know if it's a placebo effect, but I, I swear by it. <laughs> um, and so the central area of Texas also gets, you know, uh, a less rainfall, um, 20 to 30 inches of rain. And it's, um, it's also known for having its hardwoods and for good farming and ranching. So this town that I'm in, hopefully, hopefully this will give it away. If not, 
I'm just going to, I'm going to leave this call a happy woman because I stumped Steve. Oh, you didn't stump me. I know what it is right now. But anyway, I think I figured this would give it away. You see go the ahead. German flag and, well, the, I, I, and the I wine. figured it out before. I hit it in my brain, but I couldn't remember the name until the last one. Then I figured it out. So go ahead. You want to go, you want to go ahead and you want to go ahead and share it? You sure you want me to? Sure. Fredericksburg. Yes. Ding, 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 ding. Have you ever traveled to Fredericksburg? One time. Okay. One time. Yeah. What do you What do you recall about that that trip? Oh, it was with a bunch of elderly, mostly ladies from a church on a church bus. Okay. Yeah. And that's about it. You know, we went and ate at a restaurant, and you know, it, it was just one of those things. Some I was touristy kind of stuff, and yeah, I was younger. Then I was a minister of education and administration. Somebody had to go with them, you know, on staff. So okay. I got I got tagged for that many times. Nice. We we've gone. Um, my husband and I have gone, and then I've taken a couple of girls trips there, and um, and it's I mean it's always just full of food and drink and live entertainment. But there's so much rich history there and the architecture of some of the like the old churches and um, libraries and they have some museums there that are just crazy cool. But the town really is. Um, it's a lot of the tourists go just for the wine country. More than 60 different wineries are there, wine tastings, um, vineyards that cover three viticulture areas. Um, and then, of course, there's a lot of uh, celebrations around wine. They have an annual wine fest. They have a number of restaurants that um, participate in um, like a wine trail. Um, they have wine pairing classes. Um, and then they have a, uh, a number of restaurants that come into the area that are, um, that make their menu around the local wines. Like it's, it's a big piece of the town. And then also, uh, so Fredericksburg dates back to 1846 when the first German settlers arrived in the Texas Hill Country. And then throughout its 175 years of history, the area has been home to several figures that have shaped um, the history of the world. And um, we'll actually mention that later in a slide talking about some of the museums, but it just celebrated its 175th anniversary of the town. About and a year, almost a year ago. Almost a year ago, yeah. yeah, yeah. And in its big uh, town square, there's a lot of um, uh, there's a lot of um, like a hat tip to different um, German fashion and architecture. Kind of yeah. cool, fun little town. Yeah. So a few more things there. That's the home of the National Museum of the Pacific War. It's the home of Lyndon B. Johnson State Park, and there's a Pioneer Museum. That is kind of small, but it's really neat. Um, of course, there are a ton of wineries. And then there's a hotel there. It's a hotel and restaurant that's built into an old uh, aircraft hangar called the Hangar Hotel. They have um, a ton of different um, orchards and parks, too. So a lot of people are growing peaches and pumpkins and pecans. They have breweries. And it's a, it's a big, big, small town. So one of the places I've gone to a couple of times, um, and it never ceases to amaze me because they always seem to find some new article or exhibit, um, but this National Museum of the Pacific War is a really neat place to go if you guys ever travel to Fredericksburg. So it was named after Fleet Admiral, Admiral Chester Nimitz. Um, it's the Nimitz Museum, and it opened in 1967. And it's recognized today as its world-class cultural institution and is affiliated with the Smithsonian. So I'm, you know, I'm wondering, have you ever traveled to any of the Smithsonian museums? I have not. No. There are a couple of them in uh, around DC that I, I went to. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them, I as I understand it, they share uh, they share um, items and artifacts. 
And, yeah. um, but there's like a special way of preserving them and transporting them to go from one place to another. So I almost wonder if there are other Smithsonian affiliates that do like, you know, whether it's the um, Pacific War artifacts or just war in general, or if I'm sure share. there, I'm sure there are others, you know, along the way. Yeah. We need to remember to ask the Eamon Carter folks that come and do a program if they share artifacts too amongst that way it's always something fresh and new i, I think, think they do i think, think they do it. yeah has yeah. is it uh isn't it peggy i think peggy yeah peggy you know, spear yeah. has she has she mentioned working with other museums to get new artifacts well she's mentioned that sometimes they have things come in from other museums and some of their stuff goes up to other museums okay you know, so i was thinking if they don't do that they probably should that would be wise yeah. to share the wealth mm, what year i should have looked this up what what is the timeline of the pacific war uh, let me see pacific war would have ended in 45 or 46 or 47, I can't remember which one. And it didn't start till probably 42, I think, 42. Okay. 42 it, to, when did you say? I think 45 50. or 47, something like that. Oh, and then if the museum started in 67, mm -hmm. that was a pretty quick turnaround. Yes, yeah. That's pretty neat. To, um, and the goal of the, it's apparently the goal of this specific museum is to find ways to honor all of the men and women who served and supported the war efforts. So maybe yeah. that's why it's so all inclusive because you see everything. You see everything from um, like a, like seamstresses to um, transportation companies back home. You see all kinds of stuff. And this hangar hotel. It's just a unique, it's just a unique setup. So um, it's mm -hmm. a functioning hangar um, where people can, you know, store their aircraft and it's a next okay. to a small, um, a small okay. uh, runway, but um, they have a, uh, it's like a bed and breakfast hotel and okay. um, a restaurant, but it's, it showcases a lot of um, uh, um, like items and artifacts and the look and feel of World War II. So okay. it's like stepping back in time, going into a hotel and restaurant. It's just, it's neat. If you were to go to cool. Fredericksburg, would you travel to? I think I, I'd, I'd like to say in this. It would, this yeah. Place. yeah. They have a huge um, USO um, mm -hmm. uh, area and a bunch of pictures and stories and things like that. It's just, it's neat. Um, let's see. Oh, the Hangar Hotel is a stylish adult environment featuring airplane memorabilia, USO history, and the romance of the 1940s. I've often, I've often said I was, I was born in the wrong era. I should have been, I should have grown up in the probably 50s. I think there are many people, there are many people who have said that. I really? The wrong era. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Do you feel like you were, you were born into the right era? Oh, I, mean, I, I don't know. God has a plan and all, but yeah, God has a plan. I don't know. You know, hey. I just I, don't I, don't know. Know. I feel like no, a I feel like an old soul whenever I connect to you know decades. That's because past. we're making we're making you an old soul. <laughs> I like it though. I love it. Wouldn't trade it for the world. Huh? Okay, so um, this uh, this area it's it has a lot of uh, German history, and mm. it shows in its architecture a lot. So the architectural structures of this town are unique to the Texas Hill Country and obviously show evidence of the German immigrants who settled in the area. Um, but many of the structures have historic designations on a state or a national level as well. And it okay. falls into Gillespie County. And so the Historical Society um, is involved in uh, any, um, uh, what was the, the, there was a fact that I read the historical society 
has an active involvement in the preservation or uh, renovation of mm -hmm. any any building that's over 150 years old or some 100 years old, something along those lines. Okay, okay. So could you imagine in that town owning a home and then you're like, oh, the ceiling's falling in, the roof, you know, the, the floor needs to be redone, but you have to work through the historical society to get your upgrades done. Yeah, because it has because it has to be Comp I say um, period correct. Mm -hmm. I would so imagine it, it would complicate like, things and kind yeah. of muddle a lot, but they're yeah. very serious about yeah making sure it's period correct. So in uh, 1970 um, in Fredericksburg, it was added to the National Register of Historic Places in Texas because of all of its rich history. So obviously I'm in Fredericksburg. There's a store that has some of the most foot traffic I have ever seen. It's all, there's always a line at the store and it's a Christmas store. They sell Christmas stuff year around. I took this picture in this store in July, June or July. And they make a killing all year long. Some of the best food. So if you yeah. and your wife ever decide to go, make sure you're wearing, you're bringing clothes that have an elastic waistband. Highly recommended. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So there is a little video I was going to show you. It's just a 30 second clip about, about this okay. little town. Just one second. And then that's it, my friend. I think we might be done. Let's see. Tell me if you cannot hear this. Can you hear it? I don't hear anything or oh, see anything. Doggone it. Well, I don't I hear or see anything. I didn't do it right. Let me try something different. Is that okay, better? Now you're, sure. now you're sharing the screen. Yep. Uh, can you hear it? Yes. Okay. That's the town square. Uh huh. Very traditional. Mm hmm. And their main street is the best place to just go walk and sightsee. Beautiful little town. Yes, yes. There's one more piece I wanted to show you before I cancel out. Sure. 
No problem. Mm -hmm. Fast forward it some. Where was it at? I think that's it. Okay. Some of these museums are huge and beautiful. Oh, I must have. That's all right. No problem. I'm, I'm there getting... we go. Well, no, that wasn't it. Oh, and it's right next to uh, Lukenbach, Texas, too. Have you ever traveled to yeah. Lukenbach? I have not. I've read about it. That's what Willie Nelson <laughs> was from. Nelson. Yeah, we don't necessarily go to uh, Fredericksburg without stopping by Lukenbach. And it's one of those little towns that, of course, if you're not looking for it, you're going to drive right it. past it. Yeah. In yeah. fact, their main store, it's a, uh, um, it looks like a little post office. It's just so tiny. There's like nothing there. But it was made popular, so everybody goes. Yep. Yeah. That's it, my friend. I'm in Fredericksburg. Oh, very good. You're good. It's yeah. kind of like, well, I've been to Plains, Georgia, where Jimmy Carter has his house. It's where? It's the same way. Plains, Georgia. Oh, Plains, Georgia. Okay. You know, that's where Jimmy Carter and his wife live. Uh -huh. And uh, it's kind of the same way. It's just kind of like, it's like this little post office. And that's about, you know, and they've got a little... Uh, freight station or something like because of the peanut farms and that's about it you know that was that was it you know there's nothing else but if you're not looking for it yeah if you want to eat you got to eat in the post office you know a restaurant <laughs> post office. That's about it. yeah so, that's how it is in Lukenbach. if you want to grab a t-shirt to say you've been there you're going into yeah. the post office yeah and we went by and saw their house and very un very modest and it's got a fence around it so you can't go in but you know, it's just, they're out in the community all the time. 